What is notice? Well, when you slip and fall on someone's property, you have to notify or tell the other party why you fell, when you fell, and what the issue was that led up to your fall. That's what notice is. And if you don't do it properly, they will use it against you. And that's why I made this video. I'm tired of being the bearer of bad news for my fellow citizens who have fallen through no fault of their own only for them to find out that they failed to give notice because of some law that was designed to protect, and as far as I'm concerned, insurance companies and those that caused the harm. The title of the video is Notice Requirements in Ontario relating to slip and falls or other personal injury matters. Is notice really essential in slip and fall claims? Well, the determination of whether notice is required depends on a variety of factors. It depends on where the accident occurred and the circumstances in which the accident occurred. Now, what you'd think is straightforward for many claims is not. And it's something that if you miss, it could in fact be fatal to your claim. So when people suggest to you that, oh, don't worry about any notice requirements, well, in many circumstances, notice shouldn't be an issue. But there are limited circumstances where failure to give notice can in fact be fatal to your claim. And even if you do eventually give notice, it could serve as an opportunity to reduce the value of your claim substantially. So why not just comply? Why not learn about the system, get the answers, and make sure that you do something that's very straightforward and that means complying with the notice provisions that are set out under a variety of laws in Ontario. So the starting point in most slip and fall claims are that you in fact don't even have to give notice. But when I refer to most slip and fall claims, I'm referring to claims involving private property. And those would be claims involving grocery stores, malls, and other commercial establishments or residential establishments, other people's homes, etc. So if you fall because of water or a hole in the ground or unsafe stairs or a variety of different hazards, generally, there's no notice requirement for those type of claims. But once you start introducing certain substances like snow and ice, the notice requirements change and it changes profoundly. And a recent amendment to the law, which is the Occupier's Liability Act, a few years back, for some reason our government felt that the priority in our society was to make sure that commercial property owners and most importantly, winter maintenance contractors were had some further protections to make sure that they could not be found liable. And so what they did was that they amended the law to make sure that, that victims who have slipped and fallen because of snow and ice via registered mail within 60 days of the fall and failure to give notice within 60 days of the fall could in fact be a bar to your claim. So you gotta give notice. You slip and fall on ice and snow, even though you might be in the hospital, even though you might be hurt recovering, you have to send a letter by registered mail setting out the who, what, where, when, how, and why. And what does that mean? Well, you gotta tell them, what did you fall on? fell on snow and ice. Where did you fall? I fell on the front of the commercial property at the, my local grocery store in front of the, the entrance. What was the substance? Well, was it snow? Was it ice? What did you see? The Occupier's Liability Act. So when you give notice, you got to set out when did the accident occur? You got to provide the date and the time. You also need to let them know what the cause of the fall was. Was it snow? Was it ice? Was it a combination of both? Was it slush? And you got to make sure that this type of notice is delivered to the right parties. You can't just send it to anybody. You got to send it to the occupier, the winter maintenance contractor. And you may ask yourself, well, how the hell am I supposed to know who the winter maintenance contractor is? And you raise a good point. But the law is what it is. It specifically states that you have to get to give notice to either the occupier or the winter maintenance contract. So the occupier could be the owner of the mall, the property manager. You could give it to the store owner. The bottom line is, is you want to take steps to alert them of the fall. And the purpose is so that they can properly investigate it so that they can document what happened or what didn't happen. So you gotta tell them who you are. You should probably let them know that you were injured too. 
and that you may be considering your legal options as well. You provide them with your contact information as well so that they know who you are and you should keep a copy as well of this letter or email that you send. Now, technically the law says that you actually have to send it by registered mail. That makes it even more difficult for victims of serious injury. So you gotta go out to Canada Post and you gotta get the formal registered slip so that there's a record that it was delivered. And really in doing so, it's quite wise to do so because you're protecting your own rear end. At the end of the day, if you send it by regular mail, which is acceptable, although the act specifically states that it needs to be registered mail, sending it by mail, there are occasions, even though my bills always seem to get to me. But when you write to insurance companies or you write to grocery stores or owners of malls, all of a sudden the mail often gets lost in the mail. They don't seem to get their mail, which is why registered mail is always a good idea because somebody will likely sign for it. So claims involving snow and ice, got to give notice now within 60 days. And if you don't, the first thing you're going to get in terms of a response when dealing with the litigation or the insurance company is why didn't you comply with the notice provisions? And yes, there are provisions that will allow you to make a reasonable excuse, but the law has historically been less liberal than we'd like it to be. I've taken it upon myself to create a template for you, which is a compliant notice letter that you're gonna be able to insert your fact pattern, your information, and all the important details into this notice letter so that it is compliant. It's easy to download, it's available, and it's fully customizable for you. And best of all, you'll be able to sleep at night knowing that you've in fact complied and given the proper type of notice without having to worry about it being thrown in your face at a later date. After you've given notice, that's just the first step in this battle and or your journey towards succeeding in a personal injury claim involving slip and fall claims. So now we move on to, surely there are other property types and the answer is of course there is. We've talked about private property, commercial or properties, residential properties. And like I said, the nature of the hazard dictates the type of notice you have to give. But let's say you're walking on a city sidewalk or you're crossing the street. Well, there's different notice requirements for that. And frankly, there's a whole other statute that deals with slip and falls or trip and falls on municipal property. So what is the notice period for municipal claims where you fall on city sidewalks? And remember, there's a variety of reasons why people fall on city sidewalks. It can be because of snow and ice. It can also be because of disrepair. Everybody's seen sidewalks heave. That's a common trend in Ontario because of the freeze thaw cycles where the sidewalks lift up and there's often a one or two inch or even three inch gap between the two slabs. So when people slip and fall because of ice and snow or because of just general disrepair, there's actually even a shorter notice period. And that notice period is 10 days. And the law specifically states that when asserting a claim under the Municipal Act, you have to give notice in writing via again registered mail but this time it's to the clerk of the township or of the city and when you go on the city's website you'll be able to see who the clerk is and what their address is and again it's required by registered mail although often an email will suffice and the clerks in many of these jurisdictions will acknowledge receipt and again when giving notice you have to make sure that you specify the who what where when how and why so you got to tell them it involved you, you got to tell them what the hazard was you got to give them the location of the fall that's always the same in, in in every case you you want to always tell them where you fell so for instance as i was referring to in the other point about private property you got to tell them it was in front of this store you got to give them the address you got to give them as much detail as possible and it's the same with municipal claims you got to specify what side of the road you were on you got to specify what the nearest intersection was and whether or not you were east or west or north or south of that intersection and you also need to tell them what was the cause of the fall and what you injured. Those are the best starting points when giving notice. You want to make sure that your notice is comprehensive so that no one can turn around and say, oh, well, you didn't comply with this or you didn't tell us where it was so we couldn't investigate it and now we're prejudiced. Take away all those opportunities for insurance companies or municipalities to use a non-compliant notice against you. And then we turn to other properties that aren't covered by private or municipal properties and those properties are often 
owned by the crown. And in Canada, the crown is really the government, not a municipality, not the city, but for instance, the federal government or the provincial government. And it's similar to the claims against municipalities. The notice period in these type of claims is again, 10 days. Uh, but once you want to start an action against, and now it's referred to against the king, it used to be referred to Her Majesty the Queen, but now that she's passed, it's now His Majesty the King. Prior to commencing the formal lawsuit, often you're required to give notice within 60 days prior to commencing the lawsuit. But if it's a claim relating to disrepair, let's say you tripped in a courthouse or there was an area in the courthouse that was in, like I said, in disrepair or there was a differential or hole in the ground, you would have to give notice within 10 days. And again, the notice should prescribe the who, what, where, when, how, and why. And again, you want to be comprehensive Comprehensive. You want to make sure that you're giving the proposed defendant sufficient information so that they can investigate the claim. And you also want to make sure that against the Crown that it's personally served or at a minimum sent by registered mail as well. And the actual act in claims against the Crown specifies that you have to again provide sufficient particulars to identify the occasion out of which the claim arose. So again, that's the who, what, where, when, how, and why. If you do that every time, you're never gonna have problems with notice. But notice, the starting point is always, no matter what it is, how many days do I have to give notice? You don't wanna start making excuses, even though often there are times where you have to make excuses. For instance, you could be in a coma. You could be completely out of it. You could have major, major medical and health complications that prevent you from giving notice. But there are very limited circumstances in which the courts will accept failure to give notice. So it's best to just comply. And if you live alone, have a friend or family help you. Now there's an expectation with the internet and accessibility with respect to communication and the fact that almost everybody has a cell phone or some sort of mobile communication device, you're now pretty much expected to comply and you have to do your best to comply. You have to take reasonable steps as far as I'm concerned to make sure that you comply. And that can often mean have a friend or family, a loved one, anyone reach out. You can also do it yourself, but don't screw up your claim by not giving notice. Reach out to a lawyer, they'll generally do it for you. They'll at least advise you on what you need to do. They'll give you the information that you need to empower yourself so that when you do choose to file a formal lawsuit, you're not gonna have notice used against you. So don't screw up your claim. Don't not give notice. If you can give notice, always give notice. My name's Jeffrey Presler, and if you have questions about notice and what the notice provisions may be in your type of claim, you can reach out to me directly, and I'm happy to speak to you about your rights. Now, I've made another video on how to win your slip and fall claim, and it's as easy as clicking on this link for you to get the best information that I can provide to you so that you can set your claim up for success. Don't screw up your claim. Watch the video now.